Walt Disney Company CEO Bob Chapek has lost the first of his soldiers, and it might not be the last. We'll find out probably in the next few months as the dust settles with all the things going on at Disney right now. Senior Global Communications Executive VP, Mr. Jeff Morrell, somebody that has a very storied history in the industry, being a former spokesperson for the Pentagon and British Petroleum. This is a guy that has been around the block quite a bit. He has worked for a number of different high-profile clients in that regard, and it seems strange that after only a couple of months at Disney, he is finding the door and heading for the hills. We're going to talk about why I think that is, along with a new campaign from Christopher Rufo, investigative journalist who broke the Reimagine Tomorrow stuff and Disney's critical race theory programs over the last year, including recently some videos that we covered here on Valiant Renegade. Well, Mr. Rufo now has a new campaign called Hashtag Drop Disney. Let's talk about all this because they all go hand in hand. Here we go. Welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video that are not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on social medias, and of course, do leave a comment before you head out the door today. We have a few things to get into. I thought about adding a third topic to this, talking about some Disney stock price uh, stuff. I see a lot of conversations going out there, but that's probably something best saved for a separate video just because of the amount of detail that we need to get into. We're, we're going to do that in another one in a follow-up video maybe a day or two after this one. So stay tuned for that one as well because I know a lot of people want to talk about Disney stock prices tanking because of the woke stuff and all this. And that may be true in part, but there's a lot of other things going on in there. And I do want to get to that. But for this video today, we want to talk about the recent resignation of Mr. Jeff Morrell. We also want to talk about this new program that's coming in from Chris Rufo, trying to get folks out there to pledge to cancel Disney Plus and, and basically boycott Disney. Again, whether you agree or disagree, don't care. Uh, we're just going to here to talk about what that program is and where you can go find out some information on it because I see a lot of people in the comments here. Seems like a lot of folks kind of would probably sign up for this. So we're going to talk about that. But let's talk about Jeff Morrell first. Jeff Morrell has been with the Walt Disney Company now just a few months, and he's already gone. The first of Bob Chapek's uh, soldiers has fallen, and I keep wondering when some other folks may follow suit. Now, a lot of has been said about, uh, you know, hypothesizing over what Jeffrey Morrell's choice really was. Was it a choice or was he forced out the door? Uh, they, you know, whether he was fired or was was charged with falling on the sword for Bob Chapek. A lot of theories out there from a lot of different places that I've seen. My personal take on this point is having seen everything that we have covered here on Valiant Renegade over the last couple of months, all of the machinations that Disney has stupidly gotten themselves involved in, uh, cutting off their own foot in, in, in every which way imaginable, a guy like Jeff Morrell probably woke up one morning and said, this is not what I signed up for. Uh, Jeffrey Morrell was probably finding himself put in a very difficult and precarious situation, not only for the Walt Disney Company, but really for himself and his own career going forward. And he probably saw the writing on the wall and decided he was going to hightail it out before it got any worse. Morrell is somebody that ostensibly would have been brought in to be able to work with people like Ron DeSantis and the Florida legislature, because obviously that is where Disney's largest singular asset is, Walt Disney World, a massive property that now has had its subsidiary, quasi-subsidiary, I guess, Reedy Creek, effectively stripped away from it in the Florida legislature. Separate entities, I know a lot of folks out there want to talk about, well, Disney can sue on some type of free speech violation issue for punishment from the government for, well, they can't because Reedy Creek and Disney are two totally separate entities and Reedy Creek didn't run out there talking about uh, forcing Florida to repeal a piece of legislation that the voters wanted and all this other stuff. That's a moot point and you can check out the last video I did with Legal Mindset if you want to get a bit better understanding on some of those internal workings. But when it comes to Jeff Morrell, I think he just saw the writing on the wall and I think it was, he figured it was just time to go I think he felt like there was nothing else he could do here, and he did not want to be a part of the Walt Disney Company moving down the path it was moving. Somebody like him 
is a great person to have at a company that just wants to run its business, that does need to be able to liaise with legislators and governors in the states that they operate in, but in a nonpartisan, apolitical manner. Obviously, Disney is not going down that road anymore. That is who Jeff, uh, Jeff Morrell has always been in his professional career. And as he said in his own words, this just wasn't a good fit. The following comes from a conversation that I recently had with WDW Pro from ThatParkPlace.com. Make sure you're following them on their website as well as on Twitter at ThatParkPlace. Now, what WDW Pro and I talked about was basically speculating as far as where this all might lead and some other high-level Disney executives that could be looking for an exit much like Mr. Morell. Now, for those that may have not seen previous videos where we discuss this, or maybe you're just unaware of how Disney works, each of these Disney studios operates basically as its own little autonomous fiefdom, with people like Kathleen Kennedy running Lucasfilm, or Kevin Feige running Marvel. Each studio division, including Pixar and Walt Disney Animation and Fox, have all of their own division heads, but those division heads report to one senior chairman, and that is Mr. Alan Bergman. Now, Alan Bergman's been around with the Walt Disney Company for a great many years. In fact, about 25 years plus at this point, and he's been through various positions. Matter of fact, if Bob Chapek hadn't been selected as CEO, Alan Bergman would probably would have been the next choice down the line. Now, Alan Bergman served as co-chair with Alan Horn over the Walt Disney Studios until Mr. Horn retired at the end of last year, 2021, when Robert Iger retired from Disney service. So while he's been there for some time, this is still his first year on his own as the chairman of Walt Disney Studios. Now, somebody else who's also new to the position, but not new to Disney, is Mr. Kareem Daniel. While Mr. Bergman oversees the production of all of these different projects for television and film from the Disney Studios, Mr. Kareem Daniel is responsible for the global distribution of these products. Now, it wasn't long after Bob Chapek got in as CEO at Disney that he decided he was going to take Disney back to, as he put it, a more distribution-focused model of business, meaning that audiences would be the determining factors in terms of not only what they would produce, but how would they deliver that content to those audiences, for example, in the theater or on Disney+. Plus. And as we've seen, Disney has been making some adjustments as time has gone on, especially as audiences have returned to the theaters. And we've got some big tests coming up. But in terms of the day-to-day -day choices on what goes where, he leaves that to Mr. Kareem Daniel. Now, between Kareem Daniel and Alan Bergman, they are the stop gaps for the studios in terms of what they are producing and what they shouldn't be producing, what they do want to spend money on, what they don't want to spend money on. And all of that, as far as Mr. Chapek is concerned, is supposed to be guided by what the audience is demanding and have a budget according to that demand. But at the end of the day, Disney wants to make programming that is going to appeal to the broadest audience possible even though they are still going to make some niche products, let's call them here and there, that's not going to surprise me one bit. But of course, back in early March, Pixar Studios was the one leading the charge to call Disney out, saying that basically every time they tried to put a scene of, quote, overtly gay affection into a children's movie made by Pixar for mass distribution, that the higher-ups would then put their foot down and take it out. Well, there's only two higher-ups beneath Bob Chapek and above Pixar, and that's Alan Bergman and Kareem Daniel. And now, with Mr. Chapek seemingly caving, with the culmination of it being a, for lack of better words, a hostage video that he was forced to put out during the recent Reimagine Tomorrow critical race training program that they have at the Walt Disney Company, where Chapek basically said they were going to go full steam ahead with putting more LGBTQ content into Disney programming. So, yes, they're going to stick it all in there for your children's programming. And again, it goes back to how this video started. Wondering to myself, why on earth would Jeff Morrell leave a job like Disney? Well, that's why. He's probably getting put in a position where he can't do his job. And I think it's very possible that people like Kareem Daniel and Alan Bergman are also getting put into that same position right now. Now, I think those guys are a lot more sticky at Disney than Jeff Morrell ever was because they've been around Disney a very long time. But again, everybody has their breaking point. And if they're effectively going to be told going forward that they're not really going to be able to do their job to the best of their ability to try to guide Disney Studios 
into producing content that is going to receive the broadest mass appeal and therefore the highest return on investment possible, well, if they can't do that, then what's the point of them being there? It's just going to sully their reputation in the long term if Disney continues to produce content that is going to yield lower and lower and lower returns. And of course, they've got some big tests coming up in the next few months, the first of which is coming out this week with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And then later in the summer, we've got Pixar's Lightyear. Yes, the same Lightyear that Pixar recently bragged that they got Disney to put a lesbian kiss scene back into your children's film. So if those two movies that should be relative blockbusters out there start underperforming because of all this Disney anger, somebody's going to get the blame. And yes, a lot of it's going to come back on Chapek. And yes, at this point, I think his job is deliberately being placed in jeopardy because the Hollywood types have not wanted Mr. Chapek there since the first day he set foot in the C-suite. And the sad thing is, they may actually get their way. I've said it before on this channel and other live shows that I've been on, Short of Bob Chapek burning Cinderella's castle to the ground in Orlando and doing it on camera in front of a live audience, he wasn't going anywhere. I can now make the argument that he may be doing exactly that. Metaphorically, of course. And how, oh how, can anything get any worse for Disney right now? Well, of course, the last thing they want is people to remember that any of this has happened. They want this to die down and go away so that by the time Doctor Strange comes out on Friday, people will go run into the movie theaters, go see the film, love it, forget all of this stuff about Disney, forget everything about Lightyear. Maybe they get a great first weekend until parents realize what's in the film and they're going to get really leery about bringing their kids back to it. But there's another problem. And that's Disney's same continued problem. And it's a good problem for us. And that problem's name is Christopher Rufo. So Monday afternoon, Christopher Rufo announced a new website and movement called Hashtag Drop Disney, where he is encouraging parents and, and people out there that sign up to Disney Plus to go ahead and cancel their subscriptions and basically just boycott the company. Now, whether you agree with that or not, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm bringing it up as a point of reference because if he actually manages to get some decent traction with this, this could be another pain in the butt for Disney because as we just recently saw with Netflix, it does not take much of a decline in subscribers at all to cause a real problem for a stock price of a company like that that is so heavily invested in streaming and whose stock price has been rising and soaring over the last several years because of their streaming service. Now, as I've said many times before, Disney could have avoided this entire mess by simply sticking with Bob Chapek's initial statement. Matter of fact, I think the only statement that came out of Disney that was actually Bob Chapek's point of view on this whole situation, and that is that Disney is an apolitical corporation. And while they understand they have employees that may live certain lifestyles and they support those decisions to live those lifestyles by those employees, that doesn't mean that the Walt Disney Company needs to publicly engage with lawmakers to try to manipulate voters and laws in the state of Florida. And with all the fallout, other CEOs have certainly taken notice. Just look at a recent article from the Wall Street Journal where other CEOs of other companies are deciding what to do going forward, whether or not to even get engaged in politics anymore. Probably a good idea that they don't because just having a few disgruntled employees is a whole hell of a lot better than having a massive swath of pissed off customers. And what's even more interesting being the response from Florida and what that could portend for the future should the people at the Walt Disney Company decide to engage in a new hot button issue, one that was just recently leaked from the Supreme Court of the United States? Hmm. Well, that's going to conclude this one for today, folks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's a lot to unpack here, and I want to hear from you. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on social medias. And until next time, take care. <laughs>